Hi, welcome to Growing Dreams Homestead. I'm Dana and my family and I are homesteading on 10 acres in Indiana. Today is Sunday, April 14th and it is a beautiful, sunny, warm day here in Indiana. Finally, after lots and lots of rain. Um, it is pretty windy today though. Um, but I have my little tomato babies behind me out here uh, getting a little wind and a little bit of sun. I do have them up on the porch where the railing kind of gives them some dappled sunlight because I don't want them to get sunburnt because they haven't been directly outside in the sunlight yet. So they're going to hang out here for a couple hours today and start getting used to being in the sun. But today is a fun day. Um, we've had a lot, a lot of rain, like I said, and this morning I've been down prepping some beds in the garden to get some brassicas and, uh, and other things planted. So I thought I'd bring you along. I'm so excited to get my hands in the dirt. So come with me. So down in the garden and here we have seven rows of potatoes planted. They haven't come up yet, but they are there in the front um, on this side. And then I prepped one bed there and seven rows of potatoes on this side and prepped another bed over here. So I just loosely dug it with a potato fork to kind of fluff it up because it has been really, really wet. And there was a lot of dandelion. So I went ahead and harvested some dandelion root and I'm letting that get a little dried out out here so I can get the dirt off a little better before I take it in to wash it. And then that will go into the dehydrator. When you've had days and days of rain like we have had and then you get a sunny day, it is like a really big urge to get in the garden and sometimes it's just so, so wet. So yesterday was sunny as well, but it was, everything was still, you know, really, really wet yesterday. But fluffing your soil like this can help um, get it a little bit more dried out so that you can actually go ahead and plant even if you've been having days of rain. Now we do have some rain coming, I think starting Tuesday. So I really want to get some stuff in the ground and get them ready for the season. So yeah, it's going to be, going to be awesome. So one of the first things I want to do is go down to the greenhouse and dig up some cabbage to move out here. Um, a lot of my cabbage has started to bolt in there. I think it's just getting too hot too fast. So we're going to go grab a few cabbages and bring them out here to see if we can try to get some heads off of them. Um, if not, we can feed them to, you know, the livestock. But I want to try to get some cabbage because, you know, I really like it <laughs> when I was hoping for some cabbage. So here's a look inside the greenhouse and there's my cabbage that is bolting. There's some there that still looks kind of good. I might dig around in there to see if I can find any. My broccoli, we've cut some. And some is sending up shoots. Then there's also some small ones that I can get in there and pick. Um, some more broccoli down this way. Onions, kale, cilantro, and garlic. And then here's some cabbages over here. A couple are starting to go to seed, but I think I can grab a few. And then there is a snapdragon. It's putting on some growth. And my sage that I need to move out. So also down here, I've unboxed my winter sewing, which did not do as good as I had hoped, but it is what it is. I got some dahlia tubers in the dirt, hoping to wake them up. And my onions, they did not do as good as last year. So I did order some onions and I have them up there in the wagon to plant today. So I'm gonna grab a couple cabbages and then we'll head back up to the garden. So I got five cabbages out of the greenhouse and I can see why they're bolting. It is over 90 in there. So I'm gonna have to get my shade cloth on real soon, but I'm gonna go ahead and get these guys out here in the garden. I'm gonna make sure I water them in really good because I definitely just disturbed them uh, a lot. So we'll get these guys out here and hopefully Maybe we can get some heads of cabbage. I do want to figure out a way uh, to protect them from the moths this year and the cabbage worms because they just destroyed my outside brassicas last year. There's one. I'm going to kind of stagger them in this bed because they do get pretty big. I need lots of room. Another one. Uh, 
Got a couple damaged leaves here on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and pull those off. You don't want the cabbage putting energy into the leaves that are damaged. I will also plant some seeds for cabbage in this bed because uh, we still got a month till our last frost. So um, it's a good time to plant um, all your cool crops and stuff right now. We got plenty of time. Well, I'm gonna get the rest of these planted. I was wrong I grabbed six so I have six cabbages in and then I did bring out my whole um, case of seeds that has all of my cool crops in there um, so I'm grabbing some more of the golden acre cabbage which is over here and the savoy cabbage which is on this side and I'm just gonna plant some um, opposite of where I have the, the big plants in and um, maybe this will give us a chance to get some heads uh, later in the season. So we'll get a few of these in the ground and then I got lots more stuff. So also I have some kale that I started a while back. Um, I did a video on that, I um, can't remember, probably about two months ago. Um, but it is ready to come out in the ground. It is also a cool crop that will not be bothered if we get some cold nights in between now and our last frost date. So it is also in the brassica family. So I'm going to put it in this same bed so that if I do figure out some kind of system to keep the bugs off of these, I can cover the kale as well. So I'm just going to kind of smush up our soil. As you can see, it's very wet still, even though I kind of churned it up a little bit this morning with my potato fork. And um, this would be a good thing too, like if you have a broad fork, I don't have one, but that would be nice to kind of get your really wet soil kind of loosened up so it can dry a little bit so you can get ready to plant. So as you can see, I have lots of lovely kale here and we're just gonna pop them in the ground i got these really cool containers that have these rubber bottoms and you can just pop the seedlings out which is really nice so i'm gonna put them down here at the end of this bed hello worm lots of worms today which is very good very encouraging so we got our nice little kale here we're gonna pop them in the ground Kale can get pretty big too, so I'm going to kind of plant it pretty thickly. They're about a hand width apart. I know that's an accurate measurement, right? <laughs> so we'll get these guys in and then start working on our next bed. I have so much stuff to plant. I probably should have prepped like four beds instead of just two, but this was a lot of work this morning. I spent a couple hours out here especially since I was trying to be careful so I could harvest all that dandelion root. So, look, little babies. I'm so happy that it's finally planting time and start putting stuff in the ground. Won't be long or we'll be outside every day. Wait. All right, and I keep going.
I have some spinach here and it didn't come up really well. So I am going to also plant some seeds in this bed, but I'm going to pop these little guys in here. Um, hopefully they might take off. I'm not sure. They just did not seem to want to grow. Um, I absolutely love spinach. It is so good fresh. I have um, a little bit in the greenhouse, but not much. So I definitely need to get me a good little bit of spinach going. And there are just worms like everywhere. This is awesome. The, some very healthy soil. I need to get to um, our county compost site and get some loads of compost and wood chips for the garden. It's still a hot mess. There's still so much to do. Um, but I feel like on a day like today, I have to get some stuff in the ground. I don't want to lose any more time on these pool crops. Um, and with it being so rainy all last week, I just really want to get out here and get some stuff planted and get them going. So I did water in everything I planted in the other bed. Um, just gave them a little drink. And then here in a few, I will get the sprinkler going and give them a nice deep water. Um, when you transplant things, it's a shock to them. So they definitely need lots of water so that they can, you know, root in and not wilt and stuff. And if they do wilt a little bit, like don't get too upset. That's pretty normal. Um, don't assume they're dead because plants are more resilient than you think. Uh, they want to grow and sometimes they just have a little little drama first before they they get going again. So I, I'm sure that cabbage is going to will. It's pretty big for me to be moving it, but if it gives me a chance of maybe getting some cabbage heads I wanted to wanted to try it so all right like I said we didn't have great germination on the spinach but we'll give me a little bit of a head start if some of it does get going um, then we'll go ahead and get some seeds in here as well and I'll do a couple rows of spinach um, and then I got my onions I need to put in I'd like to do like a full bed of carrots I may not do that today um, so we'll just see, we'll see how it goes. All right, so next we are gonna do some spinach from seed and I'm just gonna make some little channels through here with my hands. As you can tell, I do not really measure. I just kinda see what I think looks decent, you know? And same with like my seeds. I sprinkle them in fairly heavy because you can always thin them out. It's harder to go back and replant more if you have like, I mean, you can go back and replant more if you have empty spaces, but I just like to go ahead and plant pretty heavy so that I know I'm going to have lots of the food that I want to eat growing. So I just sprinkle them in that little channel that I made. have three rows of spinach here and I am going to go ahead and put some near the plants I planted just in case they don't make it because they like I said have had a really difficult time for some reason so I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle some in here with them as well all right so then hopefully my seeds don't blow away all right, so then I'm just going to get some dirt from the side and kind of sprinkle that over them. Um, they do need to be a little bit more under the soil. You can usually tell by the size of the seeds. If it's a little tiny seed, closer to the top of the soil. If it's a bigger seed, you need to bury it about twice as deep as the seed is big. Um, that'll give it, you know, room to germinate and get its little roots going and stuff. So going to get these guys covered up. I don't know, I may put in a fourth row. I love spinach, so. There are some things that I always grow 
no matter what. And spinach is one of them. I never really knew I liked spinach until I started gardening and I grew it myself. So um, I definitely don't like it cooked, like the stuff, I don't know, like in a can and stuff. I don't know, my mom used to make that when I was a kid and I did not like it. But fresh spinach is amazing. So if you've never liked spinach, I definitely recommend you try to grow some and see if you like it fresh because it'll probably change your mind about spinach. All right, so three rows of spinach. That's probably good. I can always throw in another one if I need more. Next will be onions. So as we saw in my greenhouse, my onions didn't do great this year. Um, I'm still gonna plant them when they get a little bigger. They're just, you know. So I went ahead and I ordered some. Um, I got these from Dixondale and they are a variety mix. Um, so I thought we'd just try them. I've never ordered onions from them. So I've, all, I've heard good things though. So. For sure. So there's lots of onions in here. So basically, there's your onion. Got the roots at the bottom. And we're just going to get them plopped in here. So get them planted and get them watered in. But look at that. That's a lot of onions. Um, I do love onions. I use them in like everything. So definitely need quite a bit. Now these are not going to vary real deep because um, you want to go to about, I don't know if you can see that, a little bit above uh, the roots. And we're just going to put in some rows of onions. So yeah, I'll catch back up with you when I get done with this. Got all the onions planted and there's the other bed and get ready to turn on the sprinkler. Hey guys, it is later in the evening and I got all of my onions planted and then my bed with the cabbages and the kale. So I'm gonna get this stuff watered in. It's been a great day. Um, after I got done planting the garden, um, our first pig of the year showed up. She's a little Duroc and I'll throw in some, some video of her. Um, I hope you enjoyed the weekend. I hope you had sunshine like we did today because it was much needed. I'll be trying to do a couple beds um, every time we get a chance and I will bring you along show you what you can be planting at this time of year if you're in um, Indiana or similar growing zone so take care thanks for hanging out with me I'll see you soon bye <laughs> happy pig Bless you.